All right, everybody, welcome to another What's on Dave Shelf video. As you can see, yes, we're going to take a look at all of my old school Talislanta books. So Talislanta, now uh, this is uh, about, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And first off, I want to apologize about my voice. I've, I've uh, caught another cold. Uh, another mother had a doctor's appointment. Every time she has a doctor's appointment, I get sick every time, so... No matter how much vitamin C I take, man, 2,000, what, 2,000 milligrams a day, and I still get sick. But, oh, well, feeling better. But anyway, I apologize about my voice. Uh, Going to talk all about Tal Slanta as much as I can remember because I don't, I don't rewrite anything. I don't, I don't do a lot of research. I try to remember it. I do research about every game, but not before I stream. I'm just turning it on and, and going with the flow. So... <laughs> Uh, Tal Slanta, <clears throat> great game. A couple of years ago, I did a top five uh, RPG game, my favorite RPG games of all time. And Tal Slanta was definitely in the top five. So Tal Slanta, how I got into Tal Slanta, it, it was kind of cool because I was introduced to it twice. Not once, but twice. So the first time, we used to have uh, I, when I lived in Flo back when I lived in Florida near Orlando, we had a an amazing game store in Orlando, right across from the Naval Training Center in Orlando, where all the recruits would go and train. Well, across the street from that, from you know the Naval Training Center, the NTC as it was called, thousands and thousands and thousands of sailors there going through boot camp. Well, anyway, I guess when they would get liberty and stuff after they'd graduate boot camp, a lot of these guys would go across the street to this massive game store called Enterprise 1701. So if any of you guys are, are watching this video and you guys lived in Orlando, and actually one of my players, Pernicious Pilfer, in my Dragon Age game currently, he was in the Navy at the Orlando Naval Training Center at the same time that my friends and I were skipping school every day to go to Orlando and play D&D &D or whatever we could. And we'd love to play with the sailors because, you know, they had the books that we could look at and stuff and, you know, see what we wanted to buy because we had to mow lawns and stuff and buy a book at a time or, or whatever. So, yeah, that, that's how it was the first time how I was introduced to Tal Slanta. And the sailors were playing because there were lots of tables there, you know, lots of games going on. I mean, Warhammer was being played, Basic D&D, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is being played. And we we're, you know, taking a look at Tal Slanta. The, these guys were playing Tal Slanta. And so we started, you know, we asked if we could look through their books because we wanted to see what it was like, you know. Because it had this, it had this, the, the main gimmick of Talislanta, as you can see before I start rifling through all these books, is, so these books are super old. I paid 10 bucks for this book back at Enterprise 1701. Uh, so if any of you guys, throw some comments down there if you ever were at Enterprise 1701. So here, here's the, the main gimmick of Talislanta. You know, there's no armor classes, there's no saving throws or anything like that. There's just die results. So if you roll a zero or less, you get a combat mishap or a magical mishap or a mishap if you're doing like skill or attributes. If you roll a one to a five, you miss in combat, your spell fails, and your skill and attribute fails. So you can see the theme here as you know rolls uh, six and this is a 20 sided by the way six to ten you do it's a glancing blow so you do like half damage and your spell cast is normal and then you have a successful skill attribute 11 to 20 is a regular hit normal damage spell goes off as normal and you're successful so if you roll a 21 and over you have a uh Maximum damage roll for, for damage. Superior spell casting for max damage. Uh, same thing with the skill tribute. So you guys can see how the rolls. So when we were when we were seeing that, we were like, oh, that's what intrigued us. 
You know, because there's no armor class in Talislanta. There's a defense score that mitigates some of your damage, but but as for like rolling against a 20 armor class, it just doesn't happen. What you do is you compare your, uh, I believe it is the uh, combat rating or CR, and say if you have a combat rating of 8 and the monster's level 4, then you would have a 4-point advantage on your combat rating, so you would get a plus four to your D20 roll. And, you know, when we heard that, we were like, wow, that's ingenious, you know. We didn't have to worry about, because we were playing, you know, we were playing basic D&D and, and first edition advance, and that's all Thacko. Negative numbers, you know, up to like negative 25 or 30. So when we saw that you can just roll a D20 and have a success or a failure on what you roll, we were like, wow, this Talislanta game is pretty cool. So, you know, this is in the middle of the 80s. So there wasn't, there was a lot of games out, but I mean, not like there is today. So yeah, we, we got with the sailors. We, we started uh, uh, reading about it and we were like, cool. So, you know, like a couple of weeks later, I, I got the Tile Santa book and I know that uh, my friends also got them as well. And it was cool. And, and at the time, I'll kind of, I'll kind of set these, uh, set these other books to the side really quick so I can so I can show you guys first edition. So first edition is basically four books. And like I said, I, I, I believe the came first came out in like 86 or 87. And these are the four core books. There's your Talislanton handbook that has everything to do with the rules. I mean your characters are pretty much already pre-built for you. You get to adjust some attributes. You get to choose some skills. You get to choose some magic if you get to cast magic. But there's like 80 classes, full-blown class, and, and all the classes are done for you. There's no rolling for ability scores in Talislanta. Ever that your character is pretty much set up, and I'll you know I'll sh I'll show you that when we're going through the Talislanta handbook. And then there's the the Chronicles which this is actually really good too because there's a, a mage and this mage, he travels the world of Talislanta and he's not from Talislanta and he basically just takes notes of everywhere that he's everywhere that he's gone and I believe his name was Tamerlan or something. Yeah, I think it was Tamerlan. So Tamerlan the mage, he travels every part of Talislanta and the world of Talislanta is a pretty big place as you can see, Talislanta is a massive place. And there's lore for every single location on the map. That's what I like about Talislanta too. Talislanta is a very rule light game, and there's a lot of interpretation that, you know, the, the GM's going to have to make a lot of calls. But I always thought that Talislanta was more about the lands and the story rather than the combat and you know all the the dice rolling and tactics and stuff so then there's the uh, the naturalist guide to Talislanta. this is basically like your monster manual and uh they also in and, and i'll kind of talk about it more here in a little bit and then here's the uh, the sorcerer's guide and the sorcerer's guide is pretty much <coughs> excuse me pretty much an expansion on magic and magic is really uh, abstract from what I remember. I never played a magic caster. I always played thralls, which this is a thrall. And the thrall is like, you know, full 100% tattoos. That's a, Every thrall is the same except for their tattoos. So I always played thralls because they were badass and they were strong. And their weapons did like D20 and stuff like that for damage. So I always played like thralls. But the, the Sorcerer's Guide, it had like expansions on magic, all kinds of new items, all kinds of, you know, crafting potions as big in this and finding the ingredients. And that's what, that's what another thing that really turned us on to Talislanta was you had to go and get these ingredients from monsters. You had to go and get these ingredients from plants and other areas of the world so you can make healing potions and you could make, you know, invisible potions and stuff so you know Tal Santa was like now that I look back at it I think Talislanta was ahead of its time 
But unfortunately, and I'm I'm not being negative by saying this, but Talislanta is a train wreck of a game as well. And what I mean, and not by the mechanics or anything like that. The game is beautiful, but I'm talking about the brand has been a train wreck because there's six editions out. Every edition has been done by an, uh, another company. It started with, you know, as you can see here, it's Bard Games. Then it went to like Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast never finished it. Then third edition went to another company. It was never finished. I don't know what happened with Talislanta throughout the years, but holy cow. It seriously, it, it just from reading, and you can do some research online, and there's a couple of websites that kind of talk about the history of Talislanta, but it, yeah, it's definitely had a train wreck of a history. But the game itself, you know, is is beautiful. It really is. So the you know first edition and second edition are pretty much the same thing, and that's that's what I'm pretty much going to be playing when I run my Talislanta campaign. It's going to be 100% sandbox, no pre preparation, nothing like that, uh, because there's so much lore and there's so many adventure hooks that they have as well. So any region that you're in, there must be 20, 30 you know, hooks for each area, and each area has full list of like the flora and fauna, which is their monsters and, you know, plants to get ingredients to make potions and scrolls and stuff. And yeah, it, it's an amazing game. So this is the first time I'm going to be doing a 100% sandbox game, and it's going to be with Talislanta. I'm basically just going to start them in a city, probably Cyril or something like that. And then they just do whatever they want. Maybe they'll hear some rumors. Uh, maybe there will be some wanted posters. Maybe you know, because it's a a, a fantasy post apocalyptic era type of setting. Because there was this massive destruction of the world, and then when it resettled, Talislanta was there. So uh, yeah, it's 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 a great game. So let's start showing you guys. The, you know, like I said, first edition and second edition is the identical same game and you know the only thing that second edition added was like mass combat rules uh there's also a lot of uh a lot of movement with like airships and water sh vessels and stuff so yeah so that's pretty much and, and pretty much second edition just added rules but it it's the same exact game and it and it even states that in a second edition book which uh which i already th showed you with the thrall so the Tal Slanton Handbook, man, this is this has got everything you need, and there's not a lot of rules. I mean, it has character creation. You can see that there's walls and walls and walls of text, and I will say this about Tal Slanta First Edition: it's a great book, but it is kind of unorganized, and that was one of the big things that Second Edition changed. It basically just took the book. And just rearranged everything and made everything a lot more easier to digest, basically. But there's no color; everything is black and white. Black and white. But the art that they have is is really nice. So as you can see here, here is how your classes are set up. So if you want to play a Hazu warrior, here's everything that has to do with your character. And then there's a an Iraq warrior. Um, an Aryan Druus, which is like a seeker. And as you can see, there's just page after page after page of classes that you can play. And you know, it, it, they're not even they're not even called classes, to be honest. Uh, you just get to choose your character type. And your character type is already everything is determined for you. It tells you what skills you, you start with with this uh, with the, your character type. If you get magic and, you know, what your attribute scores are, it talks about your appearance and everything. But the art that they have is is beautiful art. There's a Sindar. I believe those are the Sindarans. And then here's the Yur, which in Tal Slanta, there's no goblins, there's no kobolds, there's no elves, but there are Yur, which I always thought as a kid, I always thought the Yurs were the orcs. Uh so there's like right here, there's like 80 different starting characters. 
I mean, that's that's another thing. And what I really loved about it was everything was rolled in one. Your race and your class, like D&D. Because I'm a huge basic D&D fan, and I loved how D&D had the race and the class mixed up into one. So, yeah, that's another big draw that I loved about Tile Santa. And then it has, like, pages of art of every single one of these character types. You can kind of go through, and if there's something cosmetically pleasing to you, then you can go back, look at the name, and then say, okay, this guy's cool right here. This Griff. So I'm going to go back and look for the Griff and the G's, and wow, there he is right there. I can be a Griff warrior. You get the fly and everything else. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And then, you know, uh, there's uh, skills. There's a lot of different skills. And remember, like I was talking about in my basic D&D, let's talk about basic D&D. Uh, I, I liked the skills because I played basic D&D, so there wasn't a lot of variety and stuff for basic D&D. But my DM, he would allow me to take these skills and add them to my basic D&D character because I really liked Talislanta. And my other friends, they were playing like, you know, thieves out of the second edition thieves handbook and, a, you know, psionics. And I didn't get anything, so that's why I was allowed to use Talus Lanta skills. And I was so, so gracious for that. And there's all kinds of different skills, you know. And then there's spells. And, you know, everybody can create little, all the mages can create trinkets and stuff. And, and that you can, like, use. And then, you know, there's all kinds of gear. And, you know, a lot of the weapons will do a D10 for damage or a D10. 12 or uh, there's some giant clubs that actually do like a d20 but you have to have like a uh, like a i believe you have to have like a six strength or something like that so but yeah and then here's all kinds of different uh, air vessels and stuff and you know there's mechanics for airships and water vessels and stuff so but yeah this is this is everything that you needed here's you know the calendar and the history of Talislanta. Talks about all the different languages and then look at all these different adventure hooks. Just in this book, there's 36. But in every other book, there's, you know, 30 more. And there, you know, there's even a pronunciation guide. Look at that. So for all you, uh, all you, uh, grammar Nazis out there, there you go. That's your, uh, that's your Huckleberry right there. So, so here's the, the Chronicles of Talos Lanta. And, you know, and I'm going to show the first edition books pretty thorough, but then, you know, the later edition books, the game is the same in every edition, except, except for I think there were some other changes for major cities in, like, third edition. Wizards of the Coast, I guess, changed them. But yeah, there's Tamerlan right there. And he's the wizard that was from another world that kind of, tra uh, you know, just traveled around everywhere and, and th this is his chronicles, his notes of all the major areas of Talos Lanta. So there's, you know, Aram and or Amon, and then there's uh, Aram, and it, and it, and these chronicles have a lot of detailed maps too. So you can, you know, take these and have the you have your players explore the. I mean, the, the chronicles are awesome, man. There's a bunch of city maps in here. And as you can see, you know, there, there they are, and they're all, you know, locations. And, you like, here we have the city of uh, Dragartha, Dracartha. I mean, there's, like, 50 locations on this map. And there's details for every location. I mean, it's it's awesome. Crescent Isles and Jaffa and Galdin and all the cities. And, you know, they're mostly humanoids for the most part. And then there's monsters as well. The Mog. I always liked Mog. The Mog is a, uh, it's like a an entire, it's like an entire country of nothing but like marshland, and I and I like that. So yeah, this is the Chronicles, Sindarns and the Seven Kingdoms and stuff, all these maps and there's like all kinds of mazes and labyrinths and stuff. Really cool stuff. And then every book has a glossary where you can kind of look up key things. Uh, here's a synopsis of 
every location that Tamerlan traveled. And then it talks about the stories of how he had to like disguise himself as like merchants and stuff. And here's all kinds of historical dates in Tal Santa that he had found out. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's like the Gazetteer, basically. But then second edition went way beyond uh, for Gazetteers, which it, you know, which we'll talk about as well. So here we go. Uh, here's the monsters. I've kind of glanced. Everything is like A to Z. You know, a Hazu like four four arms they have. They can attack multiple times and. Don't get in a fight with this camel because this thing will kick your butt. <laughs> yeah, there's... I mean, the art's beautiful. I mean, for, you know, middle 80s, I mean, the art is really nice. That's another thing that really turned me on about it as well. Look at that pyro demon. I wouldn't want a door deer, double-headed dragon, the Emrian, the Jaka, the Muse... Ogrons. I remember we actually we fought one of those. I think it was bad ass. Yeah. Striders, void monsters. And then another cool thing about Tal Slanter, remember I talked about the the flora and the fauna. It talks especially in, in Mog, you know, a lot of these are, are like you can find trees that are houses and stuff, and a lot of trees have different berries and leaves that are good for like extraction of chemicals and stuff and yeah and it lists everything that's one thing that i liked about it and that's what the sorcerer's guide really went into detail about all the different uh concoctions and stuff like that and the sorcerer's guide was a uh, was a huge you know another cool thing was they actually have you know the actual college of magic which is called the lyceum arcanum and it has all the courses your mage can take. I mean, it goes into that much detail. It has a full list of all the instructors. It has all the, the different floors with all the locations. I mean, it goes into so much detail. And that's just something that you did not see that in Dungeons and & Dragons. And, and at this point, D&D is all I ever played. D&D was all my friends ever played. So when we saw this, we were like, wow, there's a there's other games out there besides D D. And we, you know, we started playing it. And then it has like super rare magical spells by the actual wizards that you're taught about. You know, like Akron or Caskill or Korak or you know, and these are their spells, and they're out there somewhere for you to find in ancient ruins and on scrolls and in books or or maybe hidden in a library somewhere. So that that's like really awesome. And it's so hard to find these rare spells, but you can find them. And then you you know there's all kinds of, you know, gemstones that have purposes that just don't have a gold piece value. You know, it's like here, you know, here's a plant ingredients and animal ingredients and it tells you what animal it's from what the properties and the use of these you know properties are for and then the cost in gold lumens which i i believe it's gold lumens and i mean it's it's awesome man that stuff is just didn't happen in dnd and then here's all kinds of like new magical uh, spear uh new magical like researching and stuff and um Here's, uh, oh yeah, here's the Omniverse. It has all the different planes and stuff. Tamerlan's Guide to Extra Dimensional Entities. <laughs> so this talks about all the different demons and devils and stuff like that. Pretty cool. But the Sorcerer's Guide was really cool. And then here's, uh, here's a couple of, of new uh, monsters. And the monster stat blocks are so easy to, you know, they're easy to adjust as well. So... You know, you got a, a, a Necromains here. It's a level 7 plus monster. Well, I'm sorry, it's a level 1 to 16 monster. So at level 1, it's basically plus 1, and that's its magic rating and stuff. And, and up to 16 is like plus 16. So everything is like so easy to convert for higher and lower levels. Some monsters are just level 5. Some monsters are, you know, levels 1 to 5, or some are... 20 plus. I mean, it's just crazy. 
how how easy the game is to run. And then here's a bunch of new character types, like we're you know, like was in the the core book. So there's what twelve new, twelve new classes here, and then there's all of their stat blocks, and then here's like a a uh, actual like a novel part, like it's called the Wizard Hunter, and it's a story, and then it has all the other books and stuff. So yeah, that's first edition right there, and that's the whole entire game. And these were so cheap, and a lot of times. When we go into bookstores and stuff, they'd be on the comic book shelf. I remember they were on the comic book shelf. So here's second edition. And second edition, there's more to it. Uh, I believe second edition was still part of, of uh, Bard Games, yeah. But towards the end of second edition, Wizards of the Coast got their hands on it. And uh, I guess there was a lot of licensing issues and, and stuff like that. So... Some things were printed that were never allowed to be sold or some crap like that. But here's the second edition handbook. And it's it's got a little bit more meat to it. But the second edition handbook is the same exact as the first edition handbook. It's just that, like I said, it's just organized better. And, uh, yeah, it's organized better. And then it has, like, mass combat and... Uh, that's that's pretty much from what I remember. And then, yeah, here's all the different armies and stuff that you can use. And then it has, like, all kinds of uh, movement for, like, airships, uh, sea vessels, and stuff like that. But it's pretty much the same. It's the same thing. And even at the beginning of the book, it, it even says it's uh, the same. And this is, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the Thrall. I love the Thrall, man. They're from a place called Taz. Right in right in the Seven Kingdoms. Now uh, this is uh, this is another like gazetteer book, and this is actually a pretty pretty fat book, and it talks just all about the areas on the map. So I mean it's it's beautiful, and this is you know this is these are the books that I'm using to, you know, put into Fantasy Grounds so my players will just have a sandbox adventure you know and i also want to say that all of these books are available in pdf format for free and they're 100 percent legitimate i mean they're not they're not hacked pdfs you can go to talislanta.com and you can download every single edition of Talislanta, except for the new Kickstarter that just came out a couple of years ago that converted into like D6 and Savage Worlds. And well, I don't think Savage, I think they canceled Savage Worlds, but D&D 5e and stuff. So yeah, you can go and download every single PDF and it's, that's, that's beautiful. So here's, here's a Cyclopedia Talislanta. And this is, this is one of my favorite books. Because it, it, it has so much lore, and then they kind of added like a new colored map and stuff too, and like eight eight panels. So you could like take this and put it together. And the world of Talos Lanta is massive. Well, this is this was sort of like a, a like an all in one expansion book, but I mean I mean this literally has like thirty pages of all the locations on the map. And I, you know, I put all these in, in Fantasy Grounds. And I mean, it just keeps going on and on and on. And then it has a Naturalist Compendium. So it has an expansion uh, from the first Naturalist Bestiary. And it has a, a ton of new monsters with beautiful art. I mean, it's just, just amazing. I mean, the game is just so nice. Even though it's a train wreck from a... Uh, from a historical standpoint, the game itself is really, really good. And then there's here a bunch of new font, like a bunch of new small animals that have all the ingredients and stuff that you need to make uh, like potions and scrolls and stuff. And then there's a lot of new fauna, like trees and grass and berries and stuff that you can do too. So hey, it was a really nice expansion. And then there's... There's even more classes. So, you know, we're here. We're at like 100 plus classes in Talos Lanta. That's variety. And then here's new 
warships, air and sea vessels, and war wagons, and all that other stuff that was introduced with the mass combat rules and stuff. And then there's like new new weaponry, and 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 it adds new skills also. So I mean, it's it's great. Now that's this is the official second edition. All right. So there's only three books in second edition that are on top of the four original books. Now, that's volume one of the Cyclopedia Talislanta. Now, here's more books. There's volumes two to six, which is The Seven Kingdoms, The Wilderlands of Zaren, uh, The Western Lands, The Eastern Lands of like the Quan Dynasty and stuff, and then The Desert Kingdoms. Well, this is when Wizards of the Coast got their hand on it. And some of these you can see they're by Bard Games. And then, as you can see here, there's a Wizards of the Coast sticker that's put over the Bard's Tale. So there was like licensing stuff and everything. And you can see here's the different areas of the Talislanta map that each book covers. So these books are just extensions and additions. It, it, everything was done except for the Northern Reaches and your which is where the orcs are but there's something that comes out like a couple of editions later or 15 years later and, and and these are based off of the same format as you know volume one which was this is the only official one but then there's like you know volume two three four five and six and these are the same things it just expands on you know the different regions like here's the seven kingdoms and this just goes into all the history, the economy, social status, you know, all of the different areas within. So it's like another gazetteer for every single one of these regions. And, you know, when you get through all the gazetteer stuff, it has new spells and new, new uh, like, concoctions for, like, potions and alchemy-related stuff. Like, here's more... Uh, alchemical products and stuff. And then here's another another bestiary, which, you know, here's all of the monsters that are from the Seven Kingdoms. And I mean, look at that art. That's amazing art, man. I mean, it's just amazing. And there's all kinds of... And, and every single one of these books is in the same format. And I've even read that this, you know, the Talislant Encyclopedia's Two, three, four, five, six, they're not even considered official canon to, you know, the creator of the game. But in my opinion, this is official canon to me because, you know, these were planned. These books were created. So there was time invested. There was money invested into this. These were going to be official books, but obviously two parties got into a pissing fight and then... They're not considered official canon. So if they weren't going to be official in the first place, they would have never been made. So, I mean, I think it's sad. And even still, you know what, 20 years later, they're still not considered official. But in my game, you better believe this stuff is official. So <laughs> I know all kinds of like new massive ships and magic items. Look at that new, uh, more new characters that you can play. I mean, every book is like this. It's set up the same exact way. I mean, you can even, you can play. Now there's not just a thrall warrior. There's a, there's a thrall hunter as well, which is like using a bow and tracking and stuff. So, and then it has all the different ways to role play the, the main races. Here's your new equipment, new magical stuff, new, I mean, new everything. All kinds of adventures. I mean, just pages of adventures and hooks and stuff. It's great. Beautiful. And every one of these books is set up this way. So here's uh, The Wilderlands of Zarin. I don't need to go through every book. I mean, it's, just, it's the same format. I mean, even this, see? New, uh, new characters that you can play. There you go. The Danalux, you can be this huge Karakan taller. There's Danuvians and Maruks and uh, here's the Western Lands, which is like the coast and everything. 
And these books are like so, so new. I like never even hardly looked at them. All kinds of new creatures. And, you know, what I liked about the, the cyclopedias were it had all the major cities and the maps for the major cities for, for those areas. You know, and here's the Eastern lands, which is like the Orient and Quan, the, the Quan dynasty and stuff. So all kinds of, I mean, this art is just awesome. And then here's the, the desert kingdoms. Yeah. So that's second, first and second edition. That's, that's what I'm playing. And, uh, these are all the books from it. I don't, I don't think there's anything that I'm missing. So not according to the, not according to the website. Now these, the third edition stuff, uh, I believe that there was a sort of like lore change with the the world and stuff. But as you can see, the the player's guide is much bigger in third edition, and it expanded a lot of rules too. They they changed up magic and they they kind of streamlined it to like the the normal type of d twenty game and. Uh, but I I found these I found these books and like and seriously go to bookstores ladies and gentlemen you can find I mean these old hole in the wall bookstores you can find books in there and most of these books I got for like a couple bucks a piece I mean they're just so cheap but this is third edition here I don't even think I have everything this is a uh, this is actually I don't even remember where I got it, but it's unopened and it's got like a fold out map. And uh, this is like a, I think it has more stuff on, on the lore of Tal Santa. And then here's the, the arcane codex, which is an ex, uh, massive expansion on magic and stuff, sort of like the, and artifacts and magic items and stuff that lost books, forgotten spells, pretty much like, the Sorcerer's Guide from 1st and 2nd Edition. Uh, Sarista is a an adventure. So it's a pretty, pretty big 70-page adventure. And then there's like the, the Submen. This is all about all about the Submen. I believe these are subterranean like races that were living underground and then they started to come to the surface and stuff. And you could see, you know, here's like the stat blocks of monsters. So they've to gone total D20 now with third edition. I mean, nothing wrong with it, but, you know, that's what happens when other companies get a hold of the rights to your game. You know, this is Wizards of the Coast. So, I mean, and then here's uh, the Scent of the Beast. I believe this is another adventure also. Yeah. But yeah, most of these books I would pick up at game stores and stuff. And even even though I wasn't like even though I, I even though I didn't play games for about ten years because I was playing like EverQuest and Dark Age of Camelot and everything and MMOs with you know the friends of the guild that I was in, I would still always go into bookstores and always, you know, oh wow, cool. I never saw this Tal Santa book. It's three bucks. I'm like I would buy it. I don't think it's like that anymore because of eBay and stuff. And I, I just think that bookstores and stuff have changed since then. But I remember getting this, this big old bludgeoning. This is like a 500 and some page book, I think. Yeah, 500 pages. This is fourth edition. And from what I'm reading, what I've read in the past is fourth edition is probably the probably the favorite edition uh, for most players of Tal Slanta. And it's it's total D20. But it still has the same, you know, it doesn't have armor class and stuff. You have to roll for success. So you, But the, the core of the games has stayed the same throughout the editions from what I've seen. But, you know, just more stuff has just been added. So, And I know 4th edition, Magic is... I think Magic is, this is the best edition, they say, 
I've never played fourth. I've barely read anything about fourth edition, but they say this is the the best edition if you want to use magic and stuff. Just because of the everything has rules. It's not like first edition. It's totally there's. It's so abstract. Magic is so abstract. So yeah, this has everything in one. It has all of your you know, here's your bestiary, your bestiary with all of your your classes you can choose, and it has your gazetteer in it, all the rules, the magic, has everything. And this is a huge book. But like I said, I've never played it. I'm not sure how rare the... Uh, I was reading that there's a lot of, in the later editions, they're super rare. You know, like here's like, it's out of... You know, it's some company called Shooting Iron. <laughs> I mean, so they got a hold of Talislanta. So, and then here, you know, I remember I was telling you about the Cyclopedia Talislanta, you know, Cyclopedia from the Talislanta series that had all of the different areas. And remember, the Northlands, the northern reaches of Narandu and Lahan and Urog right here, there was never... A gazetteer made for them. And remember, they're not considered official canon anyway, but to me they are. So here's the last one, and it's great. And I, I didn't even I just I just saw it was a Talus Lanta book and I bought it. It was probably a couple bucks. Like like this and I bought at a bookstore, it was five dollars. And I, I just every time I see, even if I'm like out driving around, if I see a bookstore, dude, I'm pulling over because you just don't know what you're gonna find in there. I mean, it's, it's, but this is all the, the Northern reaches and here's like new, new, uh, new characters you can play, new NPCs, all the lore that, you know, there was some lore from, you know, Tamerlan's guide and stuff, but this goes into detail and I'm so glad that it was totally MacGyver, totally MacGyver. I didn't even know what I had so, because I mean, I just kind of bought, I just bought it. I didn't even care. It said Taos Lanta, so and I believe this, I think this is a, this is an adventure. And then this is by Morgan Press. So there's another company right there that's got their hands in it. So I don't know if it's licenses or, or what, but yeah, this, there's been so many hands dipped into the barrel of Tal Slanta over the years. And then I believe this, I, I looked on the Tal Slanta website and I believe this is from 5th edition. This is the only 5th edition book I have. But then again, 5th edition was printed, but there wasn't many things printed, and there was a whole other line of stuff to come out, but it never happened. So, But I, I believe this is a pretty rare book, the 5th edition book. And this is uh, sort of like a gazetteer. So there you go. So Talos Lanta, I mean, it's had a... A pretty pretty rough history, but I love the game. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I I I really do. I love the game, and you know if I didn't like it, I you know I wouldn't have bought these books over the years and stuff. But yeah, I, I do like it. First, second edition. That's that's what I'm playing. You know, and I'll use the other editions just as reference material, but. From what I understand, a lot of the content's the same in every edition for the most part. I believe third edition had some changes to the world. Uh, capital cities and stuff kind of changing hands over wars and stuff. But other than that, I'm going off. I'm going to have every one of these books added into Fantasy Grounds by the time we start. So, yeah, I've got uh, quite a bit done. But like I said, when I run my Tal Slanting campaign... It's going to be 100% sandbox, and I can't wait. I'm so looking forward to it. So, But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For all of you uh, that have heard, if you haven't heard of Talislanta, go to the Talislanta.com website or just Google it, and it'll take you to the official website where you can download every single one of these books in a beautiful high-resolution PDF. Uh, everything's been you know, let loose, except for the, the latest edition. So 
I really recommend it's it's free. What does it cost you? It costs you five minutes, ten minutes of time to go to the website and download the PDFs and check it out. It's it's a unique mechanic, and you know it really got us going as kids. And you know not only and, and let me talk about the second time I was introduced to Talislanta, which I mean we were we played Talisla. That was the first fantasy game that we ever played that wasn't D and D. And the first sci-fi game we ever played was Star Frontier, but we'll talk about that later. But that we had where I lived was a place called Port St. John, Florida. And this place just when the shuttle program started up in the late seventies, early eighties, I mean my parents got both of my parents got jobs out at NASA. So that's where we moved. And the streets had these like uh concrete blocks that st- stuck out of the ground we didn't have stop signs nothing and e- everything was like street names were hand painted i mean that's how new the but the place is around for 20 years and all the roads were cracked and you know they had to redo all the roads because nobody used them nobody lived out there so it was like cheap to buy property out there. Now it's like one of the most expensive places to, to live in, in the county that I'm from. And uh, they built a library. And when we, we would go, we would drive to school. Everybody would get into the car and then we'd leave the parking lot. And, and we didn't have anywhere to go because back then there were truancy officers that were looking for students skipping school. So we would drive all the way back to where I lived and we would go to the brand new library. Well, they had this book. They had this book in the library. Seriously, they had advanced Dungeons and Dragons books, the hardbacks, no modules or nothing like that, just the hardbacks. And they had Talislanta. So that's that's how we got like into it again. It's because we saw it at the library. And then we'd, you know, we'd go into the little private rooms that they'd have. We'd pull the screen down, lock the door, and we'd just play all day until we would go and get lunch or go home. I mean, it was so fun. But yeah, so that was the second time that I saw Tile Slanta. But I had already played it and I had already had the the first edition book I had. But yeah, we saw this was this is a new book that we had never seen. So we were like, oh, a new, new Tal Santa. And then we were reading and we're like, eh, it's the same game. <laughs> so, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys have played Tal Santa, please chime in down in the comment section. I, I love reading your stories about the games that I talk about and, you know, showing all the books that I have that are on my shelf. So chime in down in the comment section. If you guys like the video, please feel free to uh, thumbs it up and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And until next video, happy gaming, and stay safe, everybody. Bye for now.